Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished colleagues here in the House of Representatives. Good evening. By the end of today, we will adjourn the first session of the House of Representatives of the 17th Congress. As we prepare for our adjournment, let us look back at how it all started, the odds we faced, and the resolve that we demonstrated. Hopefully, our collective experiences will give us guidance and shed light on the difficult roads ahead. Here in this chamber, we were tasked to legislate and address what may be called the pain points of ordinary life. As we gather here today, we can proudly say to the Filipino people that the laws we passed will address these problems they face every day. To start off, we have ratified the amendment to the Passport Act which now extends the validity of our passports to 10 years. We are also on track with extending the validity of the driver's license by law to five years. We have also passed on third reading, and the same is on track for ratification, an act strengthening the protection for Filipinos who are in need of emergency health care service. The weak points of the law have been remedied to protect the weakest of our society at a time when they are most vulnerable. Mothers who are about to give birth and patients who are rushed to the emergency room will be administered the required medical care and attention. PhilHealth shall shoulder all the expenses advanced by hospitals for emergency care given to poor and indigent patients. We have also reviewed and updated our revised penal code, giving new life to its pursuit for justice. The imposed fines and violations from which penalties are based were crafted in 1930. That was 87 years ago. The amounts are grossly disproportionate to the existing realities of our time. For example, the act of treason under the old revised penal code imposes a fine not exceeding 100,000 pesos. We have raised this to a more proportionate fine not exceeding 4 million pesos. Moreover, we have revised the Anti-Money Laundering Act to include the casino sector under its coverage by mandating casinos to report suspicious transactions to the Anti-Money Money Laundering Council, imposing stringent customer identification requirements and record-keeping systems and prohibiting the conversion of money not used for gambling. This bill can effectively curb the use of casinos as avenues for anomalous transactions. We have also made possible access to free internet in public spaces. This bill has been ratified and is awaiting the signature of the President of the Philippines. 
when it com becomes a law, it will further empower the Filipino people in using information and communications technology as they go about with their daily lives. This ensures the success of Filipinos in a data-driven world. Taking heed of the timeless lesson that education is key for a nation to prosper and progress, higher education provided by our state universities and colleges will now be more affordable for all. This bill has been ratified. All that it requires is the signature of the President. Further, just this afternoon, we have successfully passed on third reading the tax reform package of the present administration. This legislative measure will correct the outdated system of the 1997 National Internal Revenue Code. Lastly, there are several bills of equal or greater importance that are at the doorstep of being passed and ratified. While it is likely that these might not be enrolled before we adjourn, let us commit that when Congress resumes in July, we give these bills the final push as we bring them to legal life. Within just one year from being conven convened last July 2016, and despite one of the most divisive and partisan elections to date, we can proudly tell the Filipino people that we have delivered legislation that will affect their daily lives in a positive way. Let what we have accomplished remind us that we have the power to determine the frontiers of what is possible, that we can exercise the virtue of resilience and embody the value of hard work as we forge forward. While these are good news, let us not yet celebrate. To do so would be premature, for there are still many more tasks ahead for us. Together, let us commit to facing these challenges. It is our sacred duty as public servants. On a final note, let us take a somber moment to remember the events presently unfolding in the main island of Mindanao. Thousands have been displaced and the firefight has resulted to casualties on the part of our valiant soldiers and innocent civilians. Likewise, many of those who seek to realize a horrible vision incompatible with the values of a civilized world through the use of terror have been neutralized. We have to do our part in sharing the heavy burden of what happened in Marawi City. To this end, may I inform you that the House of Representatives has taken the initiative to create a trust fund to aid in this mission. This will be our concerted answer to the challenge that extremists present. They seek to sow terror, but we will show them our courageous resolve. They seek to destroy, but we shall defend and rebuild. With our unified efforts, they will never win. Let us reiterate the timeless truth that hope will always prevail over hate. Thank you 
Good evening, and may God bless the Philippines. On that note, Mr. Speaker, I move that we adjourn Sinaje, the first regular session, until the opening of the second regular session on Monday, July 24, 2017, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The first regular session of the 17th Congress of the Republic of the Philippines is hereby adjourned. Sini Dieh.